Hello again. Welcome to Rita's Roos. We're going to read chapter 14 in The Borrowers by Mary Norton. We've got behind on this book. Let's see if we can catch up a little bit with it. Chapter 14. Pa did not speak until they reached the setting room, nor did he look at her. She had to scramble after him as best she might. He had ignored her efforts to help him shut the gates, but once when she tripped, he had waited until she had got up again watching her. It seemed almost without interest while she brushed the dust off her knees. Supper was laid and the ironing was put away and homily came running in from the kitchen surprised to see them together. Pod threw down his borrowing bag. He stared at his wife. What's the matter, faltered Homily, looking from one to the other. She was in the night nursery, said Pod quietly, talking to that boy. Homily moved forward, her hands clasped tremblingly against her apron. She start, Her startled eyes flicking swiftly to and fro. Oh, no, she breathed. Pod sat down. He ran a tired hand over his eyes and forehead. His face looked heavy like a piece of dough. Now what, he said. Homily stood quite still, bowed over her clasped hand and stared at Arietta. Oh, you never, she whispered. They are frightened, Arietta realized. They are not angry at all. They are very, very frightened. She moved forward. It's all right, she began. Homily sat down suddenly on the cotton spool. She had begun to tremble. Oh, she said, whatever shall we do? She began to rock herself very slightly to and fro. Oh, mother, don't, pleaded Arietta. It isn't so bad as that. It really isn't. She felt up the front of her jersey. At first, she could not find the letter. It had slid around her side to the bag. But at last, she drew it out, very crumpled. Look, she said, here's a letter from Uncle Hendreary. I wrote to him, and the boy took the letter. You wrote to him, cried Homily on a kind of suppressed shriek. Oh, she moaned and closed her eyes. Whatever next? Whatever shall we do? And she fanned herself limply with her bony hand. Get your mother a drink of water, Arietta said Pod sharply. Arietta brought it in in a sawed-off hazel shell. It had been sawed off at the pointed end and was shaped like a brandy glass. But whatever made you do such a thing, Arietta said homely more calmly, setting the empty cup down on the table. Whatever came over you? So Arietta told them about being seen that day under the cherry tree and how she had kept it from them not to worry them and what the boy had said about dying out and how more than a more than important how imperative it had seemed to make sure the hidden drearies were alive. Do understand, pleaded Arietta. Please understand. I'm trying to save the race. The expression she uses, said Homily to Pod under her breath, not without pride. But Pod was not listening. Save the race, he repeated grimly. It's people like you, my girl, who do things sudden like with no respect for tradition who'll finish us borrowers once for all. Don't you see what you've done? Arietta met his accusing eyes. Yes, she said falteringly. I've, I've got in touch with the only other one still alive. So that, she went on bravely, from now on we can stick together. All stick together, Pod repeated angrily. Do you think Hendry's lot would ever come to live back here? Can you see your mother emigrating to a badger's nest two fields away, out in the open, and no hot water laid on? Never, cried Homily in a full, rich voice, which made them both turn and look at her. Oh, do you see your mother walking across the two fields? fields in a garden went on pod two fields full of crows and cows and horses and whatnots to take a cup of tea with your aunt loopy whom she never liked much anyway but wait he said as arietta tried to speak that's not the point as far as it all goes we're just where we was to the point he went on leaning forward and speaking with great solemnity <laughs> is this that boy knows now where we live 
Oh, no, said Aria. I never told him that. I, you told him, interrupted Pod, about the kitchen pipe bursting. You told him how all your stuff got washed away to the grating. He sat back again, glaring at her. He's only got to think, he pointed out. Arietta was silent, and Pod went on. That's a thing that has never happened before, never in the whole long history of the borrowers. Borrowers have never been seen. Yes, borrowers have been caught, maybe, but no human being has ever known where the borrowers lived. We're in a very grave danger, Arietta, and you put us there, and that's a fact. Oh, Pod, whispered Homily, don't frighten the child. Nay, Homily, said Pod more gently, my poor old girl, I don't want to frighten no one, but this is serious. Suppose I said... To you, pack up tonight all our bits and pieces. Where would you go? Not to Hendreary's, cried Homley. Not there, Pod. I could never share a kitchen with Loopy. No, agreed Pod. Not to Hendreary's. And don't you see for why? The boy knows about that, too. Oh, cried Homily in real dismay. Yes, said Pod. A couple of smart terriers are a well-trained ferret, and that'd be the end of that lot. Oh, Pod, said Homily, and began to tremble. She thought of living in a badger's nest that had been bad enough, but the thought of not having having even that to go to seemed e almost worse. And I dare say I could not I could have got it nice in the end, she said, providing we live quite separate. Well, it's no good thinking of it now, said Pod. He turned to Arietta. What does your Uncle Hendreary say in his letter? Yes, exclaimed Homily. Where's this letter? It doesn't say met much, said Arietta, passing over the paper. It just says, tell your Aunt Loopy to come home. What? exclaimed Homily sharply, looking at the letter upside down. Come home? What can he mean? He means, said Pod, that Loopy must have set off to come here and that she never arrived. Set off to come here, repeated Homley, but when? How should I know, said Pod. It doesn't say when, said Arietta, but, exclaimed Homley, it might have been weeks ago. It might, said Pod, long enough anyway for him to want her back. Oh, cried Homley, all those poor little children. They're growing up now, said Pod. But something must have happened to her, exclaimed Homily. Yes, said Pod. He turned to Arietta. See what I mean, Arietta, about those fields? Oh, Pod, said Homily, her eyes full of tears. I don't suppose none of us will ever see poor Loopy again. Well, we wouldn't have anyway, said Pod. Pod, said Homily soberly, I'm frightened. Everything seems to be happening at once. What are we going to do? Well, said Pod, there's nothing we can do tonight, that's certain. But have a bit of supper and a good night's rest. He rose to his feet. Oh, Arietta, wailed Homily suddenly, you naughty, wicked girl. How could you go and start all this? How could you go and talk to a human being, if only... I was seen, cried Arietta. I couldn't help being seen. Papa was seen. I don't think he's all as awful as you're trying to make out. I don't think human beings are all that bad. They're bad and they're good, said Pod. They're honest and they're artful. It's just as it takes them it's just as it takes them at their moment, and animals, if they could talk, would say the same. Steer clear of them, that's what I've always been told. No matter what they promise you, no good really ever comes to no one from any human being. That's the end of chapter 14. So we read two chapters today. Maybe we'll catch back up. Chapter 15's next. And I'll go start supper and we'll read again another day.